Okay. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back Hello. to Free Flow with myself, Saoirse Rattigan, and my darling cousin, Julia Marquez. Marquez. <laughs> Hello. Um, <laughs> welcome to episode nine. We are on episode Ooh. nine because I ended up leaving episode six in because there was a wobble for a couple of episodes, but we, I left it in. It's all good. <laughs> um, we're on a, we're on a session nine, episode nine. And today we're exploring the five chambers of menstruation. It's a bit like Harry Potter, Ooh. but <laughs> yeah, basically. But Harry Potter would never have experienced this. Yeah, cleaning my camera up. <laughs> um. So, um. Yes. So, um, <laughs> I put here, and we'll see how we kind of go at the end. But we like to have a little, um, a little tagline for them. We don't have a tagline mm. for the old, uh, for the crossover day session seven. One didn't really pop oh. up, but maybe we'll marinate on it. Something will. <laughs> But uh, the little tagline yeah. I've put is uh, pace yourself before you wreck yourself. Because I feel like each one of these is quite, you know, ah. pacing. Um, okay. So as I said with Julia just now, there are there are five chambers of menstruation. And um, mm. Julia is very new to this part. And I think a mm. lot of people will be listening, which is great. Um, yeah. So it's good for me to just get my teacher hat on and make sure it's kind of clear. Um, so Julia can kind of advocate for people that are newer to to this or haven't heard of it, if you're, you know, totally a beginner. And um, mm. what we're going to do is um, originally I thought, oh, we'll do, a, we'll do five episodes. We'll do one on each. And then I thought, oh, maybe we'll do one. And then I, what we've decided <laughs> this evening is we're going to we're going to go with it a bit and we're going to see yeah. um, what kind of comes up naturally, because it may be or we definitely won't cover all five tonight. That's cool. Yeah. So it will be a, 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 a few parts of an episode. Um but yes, but before we dive in, <laughs> what day of your cycle are you on? <laughs> uh, I'm on day 12. Okay. Got my little book. Yeah. Oh, so, book. so I and I would say I'm in summer okay. today. So I'm actually going to grab my pen and mm-hmm. write that down right now. In summer. Um, <laughs> in summer. If I can find my pen. <laughs> um, yeah, because I, I've started noting down my seasons in my little tracking book why have um, i never thought to do that that's a really good idea <laughs> yeah <laughs> I have the day of my cycle but i don't know down the seasons that's a good way yeah that's yeah. a good idea actually yeah okay yeah cool. I might and then do an um, of that on the ready study chart guide because i do have a i do mm, have a wheel now so it'd be nice to add that in oh i like that yeah yeah so i've started doing my when i'm in my period i write in red pen Yes, and yeah. then I write the season in green. Yes, yeah. oh, I like that because yeah. I normally just journal it all out. But then, of course, I do have to. I do have to read through my journal. <laughs> Not loads, but it's like, well, I like that. Yeah, keep it yeah. Some... Okay, it's cool. a little marker. Yeah, yeah, I do that so... with my meds for the for the ADHD and also with meditation and exercise. Um, <sighs> but I like that doing the season. Mm. Oh, yeah, because then you can get a hangover of your crop. Hang, hang, hang on, but. You, know, you get your head around your crossover days, which is what we discussed in uh, episode seven. It's actually really helped because mm. I would say the last two days I've been in crossover days and I've felt yes. a bit. No, I, actually, I think yesterday was prob- so either yesterday or today I was in summer, but the day before I was feeling very like anxious and not self confident at all. And then mm. I was like, I'm transitioning. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes yes <laughs> and it was That's really what helpful I noticed as well sometimes it is that yeah that transitioning um mm. yeah definitely it's, it's interesting that may be where I'm actually because I'm on I'm on cycle yeah, day 19 um so I would say 19. I'm in my um yeah definitely um in kind of autumn and I feel like okay. the weekend was um the full moon in Leo and I was ovulating Ooh. with the full moon so it was like Ooh. energy of full moon energy of ovulation but you know I feel, <laughs> tend to feel a bit scattered um which you talk about a lot in the the one of the I think maybe episode three the inner summer one um Mm. about the kind of the scatteredness so and then I also did a um oh what was it called it was neurodivergency for no it was I think it was she says I'm trying to remember what it was and it was cycling body (laughs) embodiment for neurospicy menstruators which was like a talk I gave in um, someone's group in the US which was awesome um, cool. it was supposed to be at half 11 on Saturday night which is late but because of the, the time zone and mm. I like to do it live and I thought I'm in my inner summer and it's a full moon so I'm not going to be sleeping 
because I just don't speak <laughs> so I might as well you know and then um bless her she accidentally, she accidentally booked it for there normally they do it at half six so she booked it for that so instead of being at half 11 it was at half 12 for me oh wow it was even later so I just kind of threw myself mm. out a little bit um but yeah. it was really fun and you know like I say I thought well I won't you know I'm not really gonna be sleeping that well anyway um but yeah but all that to say is that I normally I have sort of a 24 to 26 day cycle but it has been 27 the last few days so I feel like mm. my my inner autumn is hitting a bit later because normally 17 18 or 19 I'll wake up and it'll be kind of brain foggy and I definitely felt more like discombobulated and scattered this morning so I would say mm. inner autumn is a is a foot so um okay. yeah day 19 <laughs> um but yeah so I've got my right. notes um yeah so um red school kind of you know again um you know I, I kind of always try and leave it in the show notes but you know this work is really based on so much of the work that red school have done Shani and alexandra i did the menstrual leadership program last year and um this is the you know the language that they use the language that they have given us um is so helpful to just navigate all of this you know all of this all of this <laughs> so um they kind yeah. of they kind of speak about the five chambers of menstruation. So last um with the with we last kind of episode, which will be live next week, session eight, we looked at the three menstrual maps. So we spoke about via positiva and negativa. We spoke about as, as one map. The second map is the the seasons, the inner seasons. And then the third map is um is this one. So the the five chambers of menstruation, which all happen within kind of the menstruation in a winter kind of chunk of our cycle um so if you haven't listened to the last one go and listen to it because this will be much more confusing if you haven't had that groundwork it'll just be a bit like what earth are you talking about so definitely give that a little listen but we're really diving into yeah this kind of this this part kind of all these all these five chambers kind of happen um within the in a winter um so ah okay yes yeah so they kind mm. of call it the, the menstruation self is the home of your wild power so that's kind of what red school mm. um explain it as which i love um mm. so we'll dive into separation slash the void first of all mm. okay. um so the chamber of separation it's like the chamber of secrets the chamber of separation <laughs> um is also kind of what we what we tend to call like the void as well i think that's the easiest way to talk about it it's sort of that um Sometimes I'll just be walking along very late kind of in autumn and I'll just be like walking outside and suddenly I'm like, oh, where am I? I'm not in my body. I'm very, very out of body. <laughs> um, and for other people, maybe it will show up differently. I think there's an example in the book Wild Power where um, this woman is kind of sitting with her husband and her sister one evening and having a glass of wine and just talking and kind of suddenly her brain is just like not in the room and she just really needs to get up and go and just be by herself in like another room oh, and she's sort of like fighting yeah. it a bit and then her husband's just like is everything okay and she's like I just need to go <laughs> <laughs> like, I need to separate. leave yeah yeah it's like well, I can't <laughs> be around people um <laughs> I just need to be on my own <laughs> just me a lot of the time really to be honest but um and it can really it can kind of happen a couple of hours to a few days before the first day of bleeding so I will say that when we're sort mm. of like new to charting and even now I'm not you know, super new to it anymore, but what we tend to say just for ease is that in a winter, the it, day one of your bleed, of your full flow is your inner winter. Now, if we're looking at say a typical, air quotes, if you're listening to this, uh, 28 day cycle, that may mean that on kind of day 27, you have this separation or it might be a couple of days. For me, to be honest with you, it tends to happen late in autumn. So it actually will mm. often be maybe even like three days before my bleed appears or spotting. Oh, okay. um, it will actually come quite early. So for that respect, you know, you, you could say that in a winter starts earlier. But because of the ease of mm. day one is the first yeah. day of the bleed, I tend to go with that because it just feels right to me. Mm. Just as yeah. I think we discussed in another episode for some people, um, they have in the spring is there that would be their day one so it kind of it really you know mm. the big red rule is as red school say you know your own experience trumps everyone what everyone else says so go with what you yeah. feel go with your flow um but you know so <laughs> yeah. for me I tend to still have yeah in a winter as day one of the bleed for ease um but mm. it's worth noticing that with separation slash avoid that can happen a little bit before um a couple of days or mm. a few hours like I say before um we we kind of start our bleed so Julia I don't know if 
now that we're talking about it, I don't know if you could think of any examples off your head or have you noticed this in yourself or I mean if not it might be something you know interesting for you to explore going forward mm. but just curious really yeah well this is, this is why I love having these chats and <laughs> doing and looking into it and doing the chat because you think you know it and then there's you think something you got else. It all. yeah yeah, yeah. and They're you're like, like <laughs> there's a new thing to learn it's so cool (laughs) um and it's very but it's it's not it's it's in a way that is empowering rather than disempowering like it always feels exciting to learn the new thing Mm. um so I this is not something that I have really uh what's the word um yeah like put aware put my awareness into Mm. observing um so I feel like this is maybe my next thing because mm. now I'm I'm quite good at knowing my cycle and like I'm like I've said I've put the seasons on mm-hmm. and so I'm kind of learning what my transition days are and, and I think how that each can take you feels. know quite a while with the transition days mm. it can take quite yeah. a while and some some seasons you just or some ci- cycles you notice them more than others yeah um, depending on what else is going on in your life as yeah. well I find yeah absolutely yeah like I yeah I think if sort of all is calm and all is and you're just kind of living your sort of normal average day life it's probably far less disruptive but um Mm. if you're in a different place because like at the moment you know I'm not I'm not in the UK at the moment so I'm in a different place and everything is new Mm. and um you know uh things are things are a bit more scary just because it's because it's a new place you're not used mm. to so I think the transition days are really noticeable mm. um because obviously stuff is ha- more stuff's happening with my hormones but yeah the this the void you've spoken about it before mm. and um I actually haven't heard anyone else speak about it so okay. it's something I'm really interested in and it's mm. something that I have not personally noticed in myself mm. but I think it's just because I've not been aware. I've not been listening yeah. to myself, you know? Yeah. So it's yeah, something yeah. I could be more aware of. Yeah. Yeah. It's just kind of getting that, yeah, getting in tune with it even more. And like you said, there's mm. so many layers to it, you know, and it's kind of exploring those and enjoy, yeah, enjoying the process of it rather than it being, you know, uh, uh, yeah, an overwhelming thing. Um, <laughs> but I love, yeah. yeah, I love it. I think as well, I mean, I haven't read Wise Power which is their next mm. book they've just not long had out and it's okay. also the menopause but I believe there's a whole ah. section there with the void where and I think it's I think it is where the beginning of your you know because the menopause is the the sort of winter of your life as it were so I think that's really looking at you know not having a bleed or maybe getting towards the end of perimenopause when you you know you no longer have that or maybe it's even perimenopause because that could be very like you know dropping in and out mm. so I don't know because I've not read mm. the the book um but uh but yeah so there there is a whole you know there can be a lot much longer chunk of the void um and I kind of love the void a lot of a lot of people I've spoken to in the groups really don't like it I don't know why I love it but I really like (laughs) I really do okay (laughs) so I find that quite interesting there are other parts that I don't love so much but I really do like the void um Mm. yeah I always kind of think of it like the void the void is like whispering and I want to just jump in you know (laughs) Yeah. So um, I don't know the the idea of a void scares me. Like a mm, void is usually so there's nothing there. So yes. To me, that's quite scary. But I think I wonder if it's more. It sounds like it's more like your mind is cleared rather than there's nothing. You yeah. It's more like this calm serenity of and stillness yeah. rather than. Is that right? I think so yeah I wonder if it's because um, and I'd love to hear from like neurodivergent people here I guess I wonder if it's because the ADHD mm. it's almost like I think the void for me and the separation is like I give myself permission to drop the bundle and it's kind of like mm. I'm just not going to be at 100% and I'm okay I'm in my own little world I'm kind of like soft, <laughs> soft like a bit more soft so I kind of have I guess it's kind of the forming of that little shell as I'm kind of going into my little you know um menstruation egg it's kind of like the shell like there's a nice <laughs> soft buffering um there um so mm. yeah that can mostly be very nice I mean it's quite a I've kind of got here in my notes out of body detached still dreamy blissful mm. joyful most vulnerable part of the cycle so it is a very vulnerable part um and I think doing mm. lots of work on the other bits and having that awareness of your seasons is really helpful 
Um, and I'm sure again, you know, maybe if I was still you know, doing all the traveling and stuff still, and maybe that I, I would feel, feel more differently about it. I think it's just because I feel a bit more at home and comfortable in my cycle as a whole, especially in menstruation now. I really, really enjoy it. Um, so maybe it's come with kind of making peace with that. Um, mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 And I think, yeah, detached, I think I find, you know, I find detachment, healthy detachment, like, I, find it, I find it quite challenging. So I think it's just nice for me that it's like, oh, it's just kind of easy for me to detach or just be like, <laughs> you know, it's not really that yeah. important, this thing I've been worried about. So I think it, <laughs> it fits with it, um, yeah. which I really like. And it feels healthy rather than like, <laughs> not giving crap, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I've kind of put here yeah. in my notes, though, life, life feels sacred yeah oh, it's just yeah. very uh yeah mm. very yeah life feels sacred I think it sums it up really nice I mean I remember having this um I've put Kate Bush this woman's work <laughs> walk in the trees in a winter playlist <laughs> um, I remember going for a walk and this must be in must be around 2019 I think um mm. so just before, a little bit before my diagnosis like a, a couple like a year and a half before my diagnosis and I remember putting on um I have an in the winds playlist so if you go on my maybe I should link that in the show notes at some point with my Spotify but if you go on Instagram mm. in the link yeah. tree thing all of them are, all of them are there but I have a, okay. a playlist for each season um and uh Kate Bush's this woman's work is, is is in it I just really love it I love it in uh headphones um, and I went for a really nice walk in the trees and I had like my cacao in a little flask and it was just a very, it was like a day one or two and it was just like the most dreamy day. Um, <laughs> I'm about to be warm. I just literally had it on repeat in, in, like, in my ear and it just felt very, uh, yeah, just really like blissful and very like calm and kind of like, you know, yeah. her voice is so like sort mm. of not ethereal. ethereal. It's just like, yeah, maybe it is, yeah, ethereal. Maybe it is, that is the word. It's just like, dreamy. Oh, it's yeah, yeah. 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 So I just really, uh, <laughs> yeah, I really great. enjoy that. And I definitely am more drawn to things like, um, oh, what's it called? Um, I don't know the name of them now. Um, beautiful Chorus might be what they're called. There's a song called um, Patch Your Mama. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't remember. It's on an inner winter playlist. But there, you'll see on there, there's a few songs that are more like... Um, and kind of like some of the oh what's it called active child there's a few songs on there that are more like um not church music but kind of more mm. that you know that nice kind of instrument there's a little I'm more drawn to that when I listen to those in that in that playlist I'm like mm. oh this is quite very different to some kind of the other other seasons so um what's what's yeah. the sort of, what does one do when one is in the void or one realizes one's in the void what's the well nothing <laughs> Yeah, I say it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of that. Um, yeah, I'll read out a bit of my notes. I kind of go into that. So I've put, I've put union, feeling in love, downloads. So downloads are like the kind of they like, they call it medical sort of dictation from the divine. So just writing. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's almost like writing and sort of almost channeling. Maybe people that you know really good with an instrument or singing or other things. Maybe that's or even art. Maybe they'll mm. maybe just give yourself carve out a bit of time to do something creative for the sake of creativity, not because you have to produce mm. something. You know, to enjoy it mm -hmm. and see what comes through. Because for me, it's the writing. Um, and again, mm -hmm. I do that in my red pen. Um, mm -hmm. And I've put. Um, yeah, I think that union, I think that's it as well, kind of starting to feel that like connection with with myself. Um, mm. And I have put may feel abandonment or old wounds. I feel like that can come up. I definitely feel like if I oh. have not, I think kind of a little bit like an ovulation, if you're super like high in, in, a, in, the, in the third episode, we spoke about it. But when you kind of have the abandonment of the self, because you're so busy doing all the things for other people, you might kind of abandon mm. yourself and your needs. I feel like um, mm. this is a really nice time to hunk down into yourself. Um, but if you have abandonment wounds or old wounds, again, it's the most vulnerable part of your cycle. So you may find that those are kind of popping up and it's just worth noting them. You know, you don't have to do anything. You have to try and change them mm. right now because that might be a kind of a spring slash summer thing to, to, to do. Mm. It's just really note noting it down um, and being... Okay being with it and being you know it's okay to kind of feel those things because you have to kind of feel them at some point um mm, so I think yeah. yeah I kind of put so to go with what you said you know put need to be able to land here and be present and be okay not to do 
really is kind of landing <laughs> there. Um, yeah. And that can be really hard. I put that that can be challenging, especially if low self worth, which definitely uh-huh. in my experience with the ADHD, that has been really challenging. I'm sure other people have other other reasons why it would be challenging. Um, mm. Transitional time of life, highly sensitive or giving too much. Self care is really important. Sleep, mm. eat, being able to speak our needs clearly and being in alignment. So I think as well, when you're here, you know, it's a very vulnerable time in the cycle. And I think anything, mm. you know, we kind of have that as well because we're, we're in the very late in autumn. So if your inner critic is running rampant, um, and we do, mm. we did speak a little bit on the inner critic kind of last time. I put a really nice quote in the show notes, but we will do an episode on it because it's, you know, it's mm, a lot to go yeah. into. But if your inner critic is right. kind of running rampant, that is a time in your cycle luteal phase where it kind of sort of belongs, as it were. And you might find that, you know, because you've got the vulnerability is there. If you are, if you're not used to being able to put your inner critic in its place, that can be really hard because probably the mm. the the meanest person to ourselves is ourselves, right? I mean people can be horrible to us but we can be really really mean to ourselves so (laughs) if that's you (laughs) yeah yeah, that's what I've been and I found that really challenging um so I think it is kind of yeah buffering buffering ourselves working out what things you know if it's low self-worth it's kind of things like are you are you being in alignment are you I don't know it's a bit like if we say if we're saying all the time oh I keep plowing on weight and we're not doing anything to do to change that as an example, um, then you will feel low self worth because you're not doing, you're breaking a promise to yourself again and again and again because you kind of have this thought and you're like, oh, tomorrow I'll you know go for a walk or a run or I'll eat a salad or whatever the heck it is you want to do. But if you keep not doing <laughs> that thing, it's kind of breaking that. So it's sort of breaking that. Oh. Um, the, I think it's the self worth can be chipped away at. Um, and you know that's just an example, mm. but I think there's lots of of different things. But yeah, it's kind of working out. Mm. You know what those vulnerabilities are can't recommend like journaling enough maybe like I say maybe it comes out Mm. in a different way for you that's okay as well but I think it's just really noticing that and sitting with it um Mm. and yeah and then eventually yeah yeah, the sleep the sleep and the eating um and maybe you know some gentle movement and things but really being able to speak our needs clearly and I think that can be so challenging um Mm. sometimes we don't even know what we think an example yeah (laughs) what do I want yeah uh can you give me an example of how you would speak your needs clearly I think first of all you need to know what your needs are and yeah. I think a lot of the time people don't realize that don't. necessarily you know so even sometimes <laughs> for me I'm still I've done like yeah. a heck of a lot of work I'm a very like I would consider myself a very self-aware person but yeah. even then sometimes it's like oh what do I need you know or yeah. that's why I put the feelings wheel in the um ready steady chart like free download because sometimes I have to look at that because mm. I'm like I don't actually know what I'm feeling like is this mm. excitement or is it anxiety or why is it yeah. there blah 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 blah. you know <laughs> yeah. why is that thing there my brain wants to overanalyze it you know sometimes it's like so it's just fine it's just it's just it's there <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Have to know why that's how you um, feel yeah, yeah yeah so I think it's really like understanding kind of what what you need and then because how on earth are you going to express it if you if you don't know mm. for yourself so I think things like um jo- I mean you know I'm big on journaling journal 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 um especially in in autumn because it's such a great time to to do that it's you're much more naturally introspective than you are at say ovulation so mm. making sure you're journaling n- noting down see what comes up you know if you write in red pen when you're on your bleed, all you have to do is go back to your journal a couple of days before and you'll see what thing keeps popping up. I mean, for me, mm. that's how I got the, that's how I realized I had PMDD. That is how I realized mm. I had ADHD because stuff kept popping up again and again and again. <laughs> I couldn't mm. ignore it. Um, so yeah. I think just really, yeah, work on that. So just things like whatever it takes to get you, because you can be a bit out of body in this part as well. It's quite ethereal. How can you get back mm. into your body? And figure out what you need so for, for me a huge part of that is yoga um some people might mm. do more so like somatic um practices and work um it might be you know creating something tangible artistic for yourself for the enjoyment of doing that it might be um you know doing things like emotional freedom techniques so tapping it might be doing mirror work mm. i think it could be reading and seeing what kind of really is pulling you in or what you're really drawn to at that time so i think it's just learning 
yeah I think it's learning like what what you need and how can you kind of tap into that how can you mm. or maybe it's just that you just need a bar without any noise you sometimes I kind of I mean I've done it a bit the last couple of weeks <laughs> and I, I realized it yesterday and I thought oh, I've been listening to lots of podcasts on YouTube and sometimes I realize oh god I haven't actually just had silence for like more than 10 minutes mm. sometimes it's yeah. that and I'm like oh and then I'm like why do I feel overwhelmed mm. well probably because I've just been listening and you know taking in loads of information and not yeah. necessarily sitting with myself um and of yeah. course meditation yeah. I mean meditation is huge I try and do that every day mm. and um mm. okay. zoom is telling me we have 10 minutes which is totally okay. cool um so yeah. we'll just do this one today so I'll yeah. just read out the last kind of there's so much to go through. yeah 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 <laughs> Just put can be trigger triggering if you struggle with addiction. Mm. I I think because um yeah that kind of you know in autumn and that dreamy ethereal. I mean I know for me you know um when I'm feeling angsty and things I can be very out of body. For me that's where the yoga really helps and walking in nature. If you can get some barefoot nature time in as well, that's great. Mm. Just because it whatever grounds you, right? It can be whatever yeah. whatever grounds you. That for me is an easy one to do. Um. Mm. And extreme vulnerability can feel very overwhelming at this chamber. And mm -hmm. it's really kind of learning to say no to the world and yes to yourself. So remembering that the via positiva that we looked at last season, oh, sorry, last session, yeah. the via positiva yeah. is kind of saying yes to the world in the spring and in the summer, but in autumn and in the winter saying no to the world. So if you're crap at saying no to the world because <laughs> you're a chronic people pleaser, like I definitely was for the longest time, yeah hands yeah. up <laughs> a, lot of, you know, a lot of a lot of us are especially like in the neurodiverse community if you've been masking your symptoms you know masking from the world um you know I think mm. that can be really challenging so it's learning it's, it's okay to say no like it's okay to, to do that mm. and you also have to so I sometimes have to, have to say no to myself I'm like so that's ridiculous why are you trying to do that today like no babe what are you doing <laughs> yeah. this is the worst time to be doing Just that thing like stop. no <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Take that off. we'll drop that load off <laughs> um so it's just kind of reminding ourselves yeah that the strength theory is in in saying no and then the last mm. little bit I put is hold the tension um so I mean mm. the hold the tension really comes a lot up a lot when we speak about the luteal phase in the autumn but I think you know we have kind of had this conversation Lucy about hold the tension really comes Talked through about it before, the yeah. whole cycle yeah um mm. holding so holding the tension here would be befriend uncertainty um court the mm. unknown oh I like this guy this, this sounds good I'll just read it out. Befriend uncertainty, court the unknown, venture into the void. Oh, alliteration. Oh, yeah. I think that's the tagline, sort. I like that. Yeah, I think it yeah. might have to be, you know, venture into the void. It's very poetic, actually. It, it is, like isn't it? it? Yeah. Oh, Beautiful. Oh, what was that? Venture um, into the void. I love that. That void. sounds like, that sounds really powerful. Like, I have this image of all these women just like, striding into the void yeah you know? yeah I like it yeah like, okay, powerful no. women yeah Ooh. I like it venture into the void so yeah. yeah so um yeah so that was kind of yeah a little exploration of, of separation slash the void um and there are other yeah. you know there are four others so we'll we'll explore them um we'll see how it goes do you like I say we might be that we do yeah. end up doing I mean we probably could do a podcast episode on each I think that would be quite nice yeah, yeah I mean there's so much and I thing. I mean, I'm such a newbie to all of them, so mm. I'm very happy to talk for <laughs> a podcast, podcast on each. And also, yeah. what struck me is that you you talk about journaling a lot, and mm. it's something that I have not explored yet. But I think it's because I just don't. This is gonna sound weird, but I don't know how. So mm. maybe we do a mini episode on journaling. Yeah, and that would be really how nice. To, actually. How, yeah, how to and journal, it's how to start. Yeah. And it's interesting you say that because when I was kind of gathering stuff for kind of intel from other groups and things about, um, you know, what I want to create, I really kind of thought, oh, I really want to do this course. And I spoke about the course in, in Cycle Thinking 101 and it didn't really land. But I also feel like a lot of people that I spoke to were like, oh, I actually really would like a workbook. And I was like, oh, that, that makes sense, actually. And I thought, well, that's also, I mean, I love a good course, but I also thought, oh, actually, yeah, I feel quite new to it all. So it would be great to do a journaling episode. And I'd love to do, um, you know, there's so many journal prompts that you can explore as well for yeah. different phases of the cycle. Um, so that would be really cool yeah. to to explore. 
um and maybe yeah. do it in a in a workbook but definitely do like a uh, an episode where we kind of explore it and you know people can yeah. kind of listen to that and if they want to they want to get a little workbook then great but it will be a nice starting yeah. off point um because yeah it can mm. feel a bit um for me I mean yeah for me I've always um I've always journaled so um <laughs> yeah and sometimes yeah. I do it's a bit like meditation you know sometimes I do have to be like so I should just sit down <laughs> and do the thing I mean yeah, I was just, just saying to you before we started you know I was like oh I've not journaled since the first of February and it's now the ninth yeah. but also I know that in ovulation I'm much less likely to journal because my energy mm. is way more like scattered and I just don't want to sit still um so I mm. kind of give myself a free pass I do try and do mm. most of I try and do a couple of bullet points but a lot of the time I won't um force it because otherwise I think it's kind of going against the whole cyclical philosophy if mm. I'm trying to do that um so I think yeah. it's also like being kind to ourselves and but then also it's, it's nice to capture that because then of course I, ha- I don't have as much data on in a summer um and sometimes maybe yeah. I'll in other ways I can yeah. or something but it is nice to have that yeah that information yeah. if you like something. so um yeah if only yeah, a few yeah. words yeah um yeah. Cool. but yeah so I just but yeah I mean journaling is just so great and I just think it's yeah a good way to just yeah so let's talk out. about it yeah awesome <laughs> well we've okay. got just under five minutes Julia did you have any yeah. any questions at all about what we've kind of said today or anything that's popped up you're kind of kind no of I think up. I think that's good I think it's a lot of food for thought and mm. um it's definitely something I'm gonna look out for I mean I'm in summer now mm-hmm. so you know I've got I've got a few days to go before that's yeah before I get to the void so I'm going to yes. see if I can um be aware of it this yeah time. awesome see if anything changes yeah 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 <laughs> marvelous yeah. right then folks. Right. well um thank you very much for listening um I think at the moment these yeah. are just going on um Spotify but you might be seeing some of this on YouTube at some point um but uh, thanks so much for joining us today and um yeah come along to the next episode leave us any feedback, share it with your friends. And if you want to share, you know, your experience, that would be great. So thank you. And we will see you next time on Free Flow. Bye. All right. Bye. Uh...